Hi, welcome to another episode of How to Do in Low Carb Atkins. The, my name is, of course, Ken Dalton, and I want to welcome to another episode. First, I, however, would like to welcome a number of low carb YouTubers that have been popping up. The first and foremost is Jimmy Moore. How can you speak of anybody doing low carb without speaking of Jimmy Moore? In the, and he's been doing some wonderful video blogs as well on YouTube. Additionally, there's Ola Baby, who's been doing a number of low carb recipes. Atkins Challenge, who had just started the Atkins diet again and losing weight. Uh, oh, to be fit. Rock the Shade. New Birth 35. Ooey. Shrinking Tony G. 1980. And Sparky's Girl 91 um, of the Healthy Low Carb blog website. I wanted to welcome all those to making videos, and I look to viewing even more of them. This episode is going to be dealing with low carb and exercise again. More specifically, how do you replenish, on, replenish one electrolytes when the whole exercise and fitness world tells you you should be drinking Gatorade or Powerade and re replenishing your glucose while you're exercising? Just a little background. This, uh, this video was really originally thought upon when I was helping out at the North Face Endurance Challenge 50 mile road race last September. It was a 50 mile road race as, as the name implies in which people are doing, an, are doing an ultra marathon and every four to five miles they would come upon an aid station and would have a number of um, typically carb filled snacks like soup, baked potatoes with salt on it. At this one it was a salarade and jelly beans or um, M&Ms or anything just to keep their energy up. And I was thinking about it, you know, why if I was to do a 50 mile race, what would I be eating or drinking at, at these aid stations? And definitely thinking of doing a 50K race um, in April in Wisconsin, which is 31, point mile, 31 miles. So with that, I started delving into the topic. And it, and it also developed out of my desire to do a full marathon last fall. And while you can drink, just drink water on a half marathon race, and be sufficient that you're going to make it to the end. In a full marathon race, I, I believed that one needed something extra, that one couldn't just simply survive on water alone over 26.2 miles. So I had, I had to develop a strategy. So I asked a number of my marathon running friends on what would they do? And a number of the experts in the field, like Matt Tarter of Dump Runners Club, or Steve Runner of Fidipidations, and they pointed me in some in some very good directions. First one would be to make your own. I mean, Gatorade is just a bunch of stuff thrown together, and that's what the first guy did. So, I found a, a homemade Gatorade recipe, and the whole the original homemade Gatorade recipe had for 10 tablespoons of sugar, and three-fourths a teaspoon of Morton Light Salt. The reason they include Morton Light Salt rather than just salt is that the, the light version of the salt includes potassium. And in addition to that, they added one package of unsweetened Kool-Aid for flavor and then added water to equal up to two liters. And you mix all that together and basically you have a uh, mixture that should replenish your um, sodium lost over a period of time as well as your potassium. Well, not being one that really wants to start throwing Gatorade and Kool-Aid into my body or um, trying to figure out the Splenda equivalent of the 10 tablespoons of sugar, I'm kind of more of a low-maintenance type guy. I went for a more commercial type solution. And there are some commercial alternatives on the market. In fact, ultra-marathoners, for one, in fact, believe wholeheartedly in um, sodium or electrolyte tablets. And there's two main ones on the market. One's called Seed S Caps, and the other one's called Hammer and Dural Lights. And it's a, the main difference between the two is one includes potassium and one is just is simply sodium, believing that you can achieve your potassium intake via some other method. My, my view on the whole, on between the two was the Hammer and Dural Lights were a much more compelling um, argument that I believed I was gaining much more of the electrolytes I was losing using the hammer and duralites than potentially using the S caps. 
I'm willing to, I haven't settled upon a final solution on that one yet, but I think I'm leaning towards the Enduro lights. A suggested usage for those is for one tablet, 30 to 60 minutes before the exercise and one every hour during the exercise. So that during, depending upon the heat. So on a hotter day in which you're sweating more, you may want to take up to two to three per hour instead of just the once. So over a four hour marathon, I could be having as many as 12 to 15 of those tablets I, however, thought a better method would be to find a true low-carb Gatorade, Gatorade alternative. And one happens to be a notable sponsor of the Grandma's Marathon in Duluth, Minnesota. It, the Grandma's Marathon is probably the, one of the largest marathons in the north central United States other than the Chicago Marathon. So being that they're a sponsor, I was immediately drawn to their point of view. Uh, one thing to note, it's sweetened with stevia which is a natural sweetener alternative to sugar as well. It contains, a, according to the website, it contains a full complement of electrolytes, not just sodium. Ultima contains complex carbs, which is in the form of maltodextrin um, for energy and water-soluble vitamins and vitamin enhancers for day-to-day -day health and maintenance. So that, that's one drink alternative to Gatorade. The other uh, alternative that I never had a chance to try was emergency light by Olicer. it's You typically find it in the vitamin aisle. One, however, not recommended lower carb alternative Gatorade is actually made by Gatorade. It's called Gatorade G2. Gatorade G2 happens to be a drink that they've just recently put upon the market as a lower calorie alternative to full-fledged Gatorade. It's a 25 calorie per 8 ounce serving electrolyte beverage to help athletes hydrate well, in their opinion, are off the field. However, it, it is like Coca-Cola soft drink that was put out a few years ago that had half the carbs, but still had over 12 and a half carbs per serving. In my opinion, it's just way too many carbs that I don't need to put in my body. In fact, over a marathon, I might be drinking up to 400 calories of these empty fructose carbs. Seven grams of carbs per eight ounces, still sweetened with simple sugars, is just not the way I want to go. And finally, Dr. Stephen Finney in his landmark study, The Ketogenic Diet and Athletic Performance, um, noted the importance of sodium and potassium. He noted in the 1980 study that dealt with so the so-called turkey study in which participants were fed a controlled diet of both of protein only in the form of just turkey versus a protein plus a carbohydrate diet in the form of turkey plus grape juice that the original diet the protein only followers actually lost lean body mass what was missed in by this original researchers were that the protein only diet were missing a number of key nutrients including sodium and potassium specifically. The lack of potassium that caused the the poor performance as well as the lack the reduction in lean body mass at the end. In addition, so therefore he noted the importance of having electrolytes in one's diet, not only for those following ketogenic diets, but those following any diets. Well, that concludes another episode of How to Do Atkins Low Carb. I hope this helps you understand one more reason why exercise is so important on a low-carb diet and how to make it the most effective it can be while following it. If you have any questions, be, for, be sure to ask them in the comment section, and I'll try to answer them to the best of my ability or point you in the, dire in, in the direction of those that might. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Once or twice.